Hello everyone and welcome to lesson 13 of Objective-C on the Mac. In this tutorial, I'm going to be covering how to use the NS Mutable Array class in Objective-C. So, similar to our previous tutorial with NS Mutable String, an NS Mutable Array just means that you can change the values inside the pre-existing object. So when I create a new NS Mutable Array, I can change or add or remove the objects that are inside of the array. So I'm just going to go through and basically show you all these different methods that we have in the NS Mutable Array class. So to get started, we just create an NS Mutable Array object. And another important thing to know is that NS Mutable Array is a subclass of NS Array. So we can use all the methods that we have in our NS Array class as well. So NS Mutable Array, we're just going to call it Array, gets, and we have two different ways of doing this. Um, we can use the uh, normal temporary object or class method to create this array, or we can use our alloc init version, which will initiate initiate an object or initialize an object for us. So uh, let's just show both ways. And uh, NS Mutable Array, we have a class method called array with capacity, and we can give it a capacity of six. So it would create a temporary array of capacity six. If I wanted to use the alloc init version, I can init with capacity. And the reason it's not auto filling is because I didn't finish that off. Init with capacity and value of six. And again, this just means that it creates a default array size of six. If I go over that array size and there's no harm done, it will just create more space in the array so it can contain the new objects. So now, um, all I have to do is show you some different methods. So array, and we're going to use not a method called add object, and it takes a parameter of the object, of course. And so we are going to um, just use strings for this tutorial. So again, you can add any object you want to an NS array or an NS mutable array, but strings work the best usually for these tutorials because you can directly see what I'm adding. So array add object and we'll call this one mother and that's good now we'll add just another object and we'll just say add object and we'll call this one sun and of course if I wanted I could put this in a for loop as well um, either way it would work but um, this is just how you can add objects using the add object method so now I'm going to go and print this out and I could use either a fast enumeration or numer n sorry normal for loop uh, that we've learned in the past, but um, I'm going to use fast enumeration. So um, if you haven't learned about fast enumeration or the for loop, for each loop, um, it's in a previous tutorial. So if you haven't seen that tutorial, definitely check that out before you um, go on with this. So we're going to use our for each loop here, and for every string in our array, we want to print it out. So ns string str is going to be the object we use to identify the string. For all the strings in our array, we want to uh, print these out. So ns log, and we want to print out string objects, and our string object is str. So let's go ahead, build and run this, and see what happens. So now you can see we have mother and son, which is pretty obvious. So now let's do something else with this, and we're going to call a different method, which is insert object at index. So insert object at index, um, we takes takes an object for its first parameter, and we're going to add father to this. And at index, we will add it to the first index, which will put it between mother and son. So it will push son uh, after the father, basically. So the order will be now mother, father, son. So let's go ahead and print this out and see what we get. So as you can see, we have mother, father, son, and that's uh, what happens. If I wanted to throw this at the beginning, I could say index at zero. And as you can see, we would have father, mother, son. And I could even put this at index two, and it would put the father at the end. However, if I put it at something like index five, then it might run into errors, as you can see. It's going to have all these exception errors, and uh, that's just because you're going beyond the normal index. So we have, uh, at this point, we have three options. We can put it at the beginning, we can put it at um, between mother and son, or we can put it at the end. 
So uh, let's just put it between mother and son. So we'll call it at index 5. And as you can see, that's what we get. So we get mother, father, son. Now let's try another method here. And this one is going to be called replace object. So uh, replace object at index will basically take an index, which is the number or index that you want to replace with an object. So let's say we want to replace our son um, object here. And so he's at index 2 right now. And we will uh, replace him with the object of daughter. And now, so what's going to happen here is now son is going to go bye-bye and daughter is going to replace him. Sounds kind of cruel, but that's what's going to happen. So now, as you can see, we have mother, father, daughter. And that's uh, what replace object. So it takes an object at a certain index, and it will just replace that object with whatever object you put in parameters here. So now, let's try another method. And this method is going to be the remove object at index method. And this one just works as so. Remove object at index. So this is pretty self-explanatory. It's just going to take out an object at a given index. So I'm going to take out the daughter that I just put in, and she was at index 2. So now let's remove her. And as we can see when we print this out, all we have now is mother and father. If I wanted to change this index, I could do so as well. I could put it as 1. And now we have no father, and now we just have mother and daughter. So that's um, just how remove object at index works. I'm going to leave it at 2 for now. And that uh, is almost all the methods in our NS mutable array. But there is one final method, which is remove the last object. And uh, it's, I guess, pretty useful uh, in some cases, but I'm not really sure how many times you'd end up using it. So uh, anyway, it's a, just one of those nice methods for you to use if you happen to be removing the last object in your array. And so array remove last object. Now we only have two objects left, which is mother and father. So of course, removing the last object will remove father out of that. And now all we'll have is mother. So that's um, pretty much what happens. And it's um, just all the extensions to uh, the NS mutable array class gives us on top of NS array. So again, um, NS mutable array is a subclass of NS array. So it allows us to use all the methods that are in the NS array class, but with some additional methods as well, with all these that I explained here. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and if you did enjoy it, please uh, thumbs up the video, leave a comment if you have any questions, please subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next tutorial.